Now we will look at something called reduced dependency. Reduced dependency is a way of performing the state assignment such that it heuristically gives us a good state assignment and then, in the end, a small realization. The idea of reduced dependency is to find blocks of states such that their next states also are grouped in blocks. So for two states, here called S1 and S2, these, if these are part of a block, then the next state when we have the input i for S1 and the next state when we have the input i for S2 should also belong to the same block, but not necessarily the same block as S1 and S2 from the beginning, because the second b here is denoted by b tilde. What we have then is that a transition in the graph will correspond to a transition between blocks. So then we use these partitions to encode the states such that a transition between two blocks correspond to as few changes as possible in the state variables. We can obtain the reduced dependency state assignment by following the following algorithm. For each pair of states that we have, First, assume that the two states are in the same block and then iteratively for each input group the next states of a block into a new block. Now the obtained state part partitions correspond to dependencies in the graph and then we will use these partitions to find a good state assignment. We are again going to look at our detector example to see how this reduced dependency algorithm works. So recall that this example is a detector that detects the sequence 0, 0, 1, 1, and when this sequence is detected, it will output a 1. Here we have the corresponding state transition table, and this is what we're going to use in our algorithm. Because this table uniquely shows us how we go to the next state when we are in the current state. So now let us do our algorithm for reduced dependency. So what we want to do is that we we'll want to look at each pair of the states. So let's start with the first pair that is going to be S0, S1, and we call this partition P01. So we group these two states, S0, S1, in the same partition here. And what we want to do now is that we want to partition the states that are the next states for the input i. So what we can see here, if we look at S0 and S1, we want, if we look at the zero input, we want S1 and S2 to be in the same partition. And if we look at the one input, we want S0 and S0 to be in the same partition. But since we wanted S1 and S2 to be in the same partition, and we already have the partition S0, S1, we need to add S2 to this partition. So this will be our new partition. So what we do now is that we need to look at all these three states here. So we see that for S0, S1 and S2, we want for the input 0, all the next states to be in the same partition. So here we can see that S1, S2 and S2 should be in the same partition. And S0, S0 and S3 should be in the same partition. So since now S3 also should be in the same partition as S0, it means that we now need to add S3 to this partition. So we get this following partition. And having all the states in the same partition here is not very useful for us because we cannot use it for state assignment because we need to move between partitions and now we have only one partition. Let us instead look at the pair S0, S2. So we group these two in the same partition. And then we look at S0 and S2. And for the input 0, we want S1 and S2 to be in the same partition. And we want S0 and S3 to be in the same partition. So immediately ha here, we will have that S0, S1, S2 and S3 should be in the same partition. And again, this is not very useful for us because we want to move between partitions and not have all the states in one partition. But let's not give up. We continue and look at P03, which means that we start grouping S0, S3, 
And if we look at S0 and S3 in the state transition table, we see that when we have input 0, we want S1 and S1 to be in the same state, and we want S0 and S0 to be in the same state. So this means that we have the partition S0, S3, and then we wanted S1 to be uh, in the same state as itself in this case. And since this is not a pair, we cannot have anything in common inside the partition here, so S2 should also be in its own partition. This is also not very useful for us because we cannot say using two state variables, because we have four states, we need two state variables, and we cannot give them a common state variable if we have three different partitions. But we want to try all the pairs, so let's continue with the pair P1, 2, where we group S1, S2. If we look now at S1 and S2 in our state transition table, we see that we want S2 to be in the same part partition as itself, and we want S0 and S3 to be in the same partition. So S1 and S2 are still in the same partition, and now we add the partition S0, S3. Now if we look at S0 and S3, we see that S1 and S1 is in the same partition, and S0 and S0 is also in the same partition. So this is our final partition in our algorithm here. And this is going to be useful for us, because now we can say that S1 and S2 should have one bit in common in the state assignment, and S0 and S3 should also have one bit in common in the state assignment. But we want to look at all pairs, so let's look at the pairs P13, which means that we start by making a partition with S1 and S3, and again, looking at the state transition table for S1 and S3, we see that S1 and S2 should be in the same partition, and S0 and S0 should be in the same partition. So we have the new partition S1, S2, and S3. And then we have S0 by itself, but now let us look at this partition with S1, S2, and S3. And if we look at the state transition table for 1, 2, and 3, we see that we want 1 and 2 to be in the same partition, it already is, but we also want 0 and 3 to be in the same partition, which we can see when we look at the column for input 1. So this means that we also need to add S0 to this partition here. So this would be our final partition. And finally, we look at the partition we call P23, which means that we start by partitioning S2, S3. And then from the state transition table, we see that for S2 and S3, we want S1 and S2 to be in the same partition, and S0 and S3 should be in the same partition, which means that we immediately end up with a partition with all our states. So the partition that we can use here is the one that we call P12. In here we can say, for example, that for this partition, Q1 should be equal to 0, and for this partition, Q1 should be equal to 1. And for the variable Q2, let us just make a new partition more or less arbitrarily combining S0, S1, and S2, and S3, and then we say that here Q2 will be equal to 0, and here Q2 will be equal to 1. So Q1, Q2 will be our state assignment here. So let us use this state assignment. So what we know is that for S1 and S2, Q1 should be 0. And for S0 and S3, Q1 should be 1. And for S0 and S1, Q2 should be 0. And for S2 and S3, Q2 should be 1. So this will be our state assignment. So based on this, let's fill out the state transition table. 
So starting with S0, if we get the input 0, we will go to S1, which we have encoded as 0, 0, and we will output a 0. If we get a 1 as an input, we will also we will go to state S0, which we have encoded as 1, 0, and we will output a 0. If we are in state S1 and we get a 0 as input, we go to state S2, and S2 we have encoded as 0, 1, and the output here will be 0. If we have a 1 as an input, we go to S0, which we have encoded as 1, 0, and we output a 0. In state S2, if we have a 0 as an input, we go to S2, which means that we stay in 0, 1, with a 0 as an output. And if we have a 1 as an input, we go to state S3, which is encoded as 1, 1, and the output will be 0. And finally, if we are in S3 and we have a 0 as an input, we go to state S1, which we encoded as 0, 0, the output will be 0. And with a 1 as an input, we go to state S0, which we encoded as 1, 0, and the output will here be a 1. And now we do our Carnot maps, and we have three Carnot maps that we need to do, one for each of the state variables and one for the output function. So let us start by looking at S0, which corresponds to 1, 0, so it is this row here. If we have a 0 as an input, we have 0, 0, and the output 0. If we have a 1 as an input, we have 1, 0, and output 0. If we are in state S1, which is 0, 0, so it is this row here, if we have a 0 as an input, we will have 0, 1 as the next state, and the output will be 0. If we have a 1 as an input, we go to 1, 0, with the output 0. For S2, it is this row here. If we have a 0 as an input, we go to the state 0, 1, with the output 0. And if we have a 1 as an input, we go to state 1, 1, and outputs a 0. And finally, for S3, we have this row in the Carnot maps, which means that if we have an input 0, we go to 0, 0, with the output 0, and with a 1 as an input, we go to 1, 0, and we output a 1. And now we can quite easily find our prime implicants, so we have this, rectangular box here, and for Q2+, plus we have this prime implicant, and we have this prime implicant here, and for the output function there is only one, one in the Carnot map, so we have this prime implicant here. And we can now write our minimal functions as Q1 plus equals x, Q2 plus equals Q1 prime x prime or q1 prime q2 and our output function u here we can write as q1 q2 x and if we count the total number of implicants that we have here in our minimal functions we have in total four implicants